Hey y'all, I'm Allie Kelly with CDX in Nashville. Happy CMA Music Fest. I am with Brown and Gray. Casey and Sam. Hey, hello, good. So we've got Sam. Sam Gray. Casey Casey Brown. Yeah, what y'all been doing today? We woke up hecka early this morning. We did. Um, about two minutes to get ready. <laughs> about two minutes and to, to get eat ready. Eggs and bacon about five minutes to drive into the city. Yeah. And we started interviews. They just been going, yeah. going, going all day long. Well, tell us about your new single. Well, Top Down is a record. It's a driving wrote. song. It's a driving song. And um, actually, I, how we met. Yeah. Oh, okay. And we, uh, I wrote it in London with a couple of friends of mine. Sent it over to my publishing company, who have a London office and a Los Angeles office. And Casey Brown here is signed to the, the LA side of it. We didn't know each other thousands of miles away. Sent the song across. They said, yeah, we like this tune. Um, we think it could do with something, like maybe like a duo or something, and a little bit of magic on it. They said, we've got this beautiful young girl. She's very talented. <laughs> Casey Brown came in, just blew us all away. I don't and know what they're ended talking up, about. Ended, oh, I can't do it, baby. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know why I'm going to America. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and it was just sounded magical. And we kind of didn't know what it was. It was just sounded really good. And then a week later, we get a call. It's been mastered and mixed in New York. Oh, and mastered? Who masters demos? Uh, yeah, <laughs> why? That's so great. Yeah. yeah. Well, y'all yeah. blended right off the bat. We did. Yeah, it was like a, it. an mm. arranged musical marriage, essentially. And then we yeah. found out that Brooks and Dunn was the same. So... It's not, not a bad children. duo. It's a good sign. Yeah, we've got a yeah. litter of songs. Very good. Well, you sound like you're from, um, what, South Georgia? I'm from South Georgia, yeah. <laughs> I, I moved across to Yorkshire in England when I was about 10 years old. I'm joking. <laughs> um, no, I'm from Yorkshire in England, uh, which is about two hours northeast of London. And um, and then I moved down to, across to Manchester and did my degree in music. And then moved down to London and then met Casey and then thought, right, I'm going across to America. I'm going to write some more songs with this girl, she's amazing. And then went to Nashville a bit and then just been rocking it ever since. It was fantastic. Yeah. I love it. What's your favorite thing to do in Nashville so far? Um, drink whiskey. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a true. hobby, right, over here. Right, that's he it. just so, smells like whiskey. Now. I'm sweating like whiskey. I'm 90% proof right now, so, you know, it's all good. I can just lick myself and get drunk. Well, there you yeah. Lick myself and get drunk. <laughs> everybody, <laughs> Sam Gray. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Tell us about you, Casey. We're, you're from Texas, right? I am. I was, born in, I was born in Texas. Um, started singing in a diaper with a wooden spoon. I got brands in low places. We've got some you might know that song. It's a little song. It's a big deal. Um, and then my mama decided to put me up on the stage at three, singing Men by the Forster Sisters. Yeah. Men. Talking about my man, and I'm up there with like my little toe tapping in my boots. It's really cute. I've got a video of it. Um, showed it to my daughter. I have a six year old little girl, and she's like, Mom, you got up on the stage in front of all those people that young? So cute. <laughs> so, yes, I did. Um, my parents split when I was really young, so I did all the tomboy stuff with my dad, like the camping and the, the laking and the biking and the softball and all that. He coached, and it was really cool. And then my mom put me in pageants, and so by the time I was 10, I won Little Miss Texas Grand Talent. And part of winning that, you get to go and you get studio time. And then you also start singing with, like, um, live bands at the different Opry. So we did the whole Opry circuit in Texas. Great. And, um, and then by 11, I had visited Fanfare. I actually went to Fanfare. And it's not CMA Fest, but it used to be called Fanfare. <laughs> um, I like that name. Yeah. <laughs> so I came with my grandma for my birthday because my birthday is July 7th. And so Happy that was my birthday. Early. Thank you. <laughs> um, that was my birthday present for my grandma, and there was a talent competition at Fanfare. So if you won, then you got to open for the opening or the the headliner on the last night of the festival. Mm-hmm. Well, I wasn't old enough to compete, and Uh-oh. I was bitter. I had a chip on my shoulder. <laughs> I left Nashville mad. And I was like, I'm gonna write my first original. So I'm like writing my own song. And I'm like, there's no. I'm on these stages every weekend. I want to be on that stage, but because <laughs> I wasn't 13, I couldn't enter. So I didn't get to do that. I went home with like all the inspiration and fire under my belt I needed and I was determined so my mom called all these publishing companies in Nashville asking for original music that I could go in and record because we were over the covers and the cover bands not that it wasn't fun but we'd just done it for so long mm-hmm. it's like what do we do now and um, so we recorded a couple of originals my mom sent them back and a man by the name of Charlie Monk which is <laughs> the mayor <laughs> the mayor row, yeah. essentially um, took a liking to me yeah. and he, he said come out to Nashville and introduce you to some folks and he did. He introduced me to Clay Myers, which at the time was working at CAA, okay. and he was in a transitional 
the situation, and once he transitioned, he called and he said, hey, can you guys come back to Nashville? Um, I'm working for Barbara Orbison's company. I'm still working music, and I would love for you to come in the office and meet with her and see what you're up to. This is probably six, seven, eight months after I'd met him the first time. And uh, we walked into the office, and Barbara saw me walking down the hall, and I guess after I left that day, I didn't actually meet her. She said to Clay, she's like, that girl is a superstar. She was like, I want to sign her. And he was like, what? So she um, gave me an artist developmental deal and a publishing deal at 12. I signed oh to ASCAP. Oh, my gosh. That's great. Moved to Nashville. Good for you. Made a country yeah. album that didn't come out because um, of 9-11. And then oh, um, yeah. Tony Brown said, Casey, go back to high school, live you know, get some real life experience and come back to, you know, come back and write it out and you'll be unstoppable. And my mom was like, can we go back to high school? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, we've no. done all this. We're here now. We're not and I, back. so I, I was in a, a writing session at the company, a normal day, and my session, my second, they didn't show up. And Toby Gad was in town and his sessions can canceled and he, he hadn't been to Nashville before so we got into the room we wrote together and he came back to LA or came back to Nashville sorry um, to work with me and then I went to LA for the first time with him we did a 10-day writing trip in LA a 10-day writing trip in Nashville and a 10-day writing trip in New York and out of those three 10-day trips we had a body of work that he had played for his managers at the time was DOS communications and then um, ended up taking it over to Interscope so I signed to Interscope and ended up on the tour with Backstreet Boys in, in my oh. high senior Three year. Times, <laughs> wow. And so after that, <laughs> cool. you know, I was just life waiting kept for all this to happen <laughs> in England, just waiting to, to get to this point so I can meet you and just do do some music. Really. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's crazy because we both have such extensive yeah. histories separately. Yeah. And then we come and no one was even really pursuing or looking for anything. Cause you know, you have a dream and you go, you're knocking on these doors and you know, you can't force things to happen. You can't make doors open that aren't mm -hmm. meant to open. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, I had an opportunity to go in and put my voice on something I really had nothing to do with. And that was the door, That's you know? So you yeah. never know, you, you never know what the you, day's gonna you bring. You should just say yes, show up and And it's do opened it. up so much more stuff as well because obviously, you know, Casey's such a talented songwriter and run right. And she was working on stuff already before, before we even met, so. We just brought all those kind of like ideas and life experiences and, and all, all of her talent, kind of with my talent and Brad's talent from Nashville. He's another writer we write with. Uh, he Love wrote uh, Hill with the Lux and uh, Sweet Southern Comfort. And uh, we just brought all that together and just we've made this body of work so proud now of that's it. just, Great. you know, yeah. above and beyond what we could have ever The imagined. full album isn't ready because we're still yeah. finalizing productions on a couple things. <clears throat> we're both pretty picky and perfectionists in our mm. own. Right. But yeah. um, we do have an EP that right. is going to drop at midnight. Uh, tonight. <laughs> uh, fantastic. We'll watch for that. <laughs> yes. Where can we find Hashtag it? Hashtag salt in the coffee. Okay. Salt in the coffee. Where salt can we find coffee. salt in the coffee? Everywhere, brown and gray. Every All the all the. Well, outlets. primarily you can find salt in the coffee in my manager's house. Because he's <laughs> the one that salts the coffee. <laughs> that's, where so, that's where the name came from. That's where the name came from. Our bandmate, our bandmate saw him salting the coffee and didn't really tell anybody because he wasn't sure what it was, but um, turns out it was salt, and it just it kind of became like, beans. Kind like of a team right. inside joke. We make fun of him, and we're talking about the merch. It's going to end up being like our manager, Kenny, is a bobblehead, like holding <laughs> a coffee cup. You just put it on the front of your car. Like, I, that's what I want. Like, forget the T-shirts. We need Kenny's bobblehead. That's, budget goes to the well. bobblehead. If you press his belly, his laugh goes. <laughs> He's got a really, he's got, he's got a laugh like this to the ground. <laughs> he's got a really high pitched laugh. He goes, <laughs> so you press his belly and it does that. And then you also, you can do one where you can put the salt thing in his hand and it'll salt your coffee for you. You should actually do salt shaker. Yeah, we anyway, should. Anyway, the yeah. music is great. Um, there's nothing, salt in the coffee has nothing to yeah. do with the music. It has to do with our team, okay. really, and kind of an yeah, inside it's just thing. A, yeah. Um, oh, great. Well, we look forward to hearing it. We'll all go find it tonight at 12.01, right? Yes. Yay. Okay, yes. we're with Brown and Gray at CMA Music Hope Fest. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.